Here's what you're gonna do if you wanna be rich and you're starting from square one, courtesy of your favorite Wall Street hot girl. You're gonna strip! Oh. Money guy, TikTok react, boom, roll tape. The easiest way to make a million dollars is buy something that's $10 million, buy it for eight, and you sell it to somebody else for 10. There you go, you made two. You don't have to do anything, you just buy something that's worth a lot and sell it to something for a little bit more. How do you think guys make a billion dollars? They buy something that's $10 billion and they sell it for 11, they made a billion dollars. That's how that kind of money is made. They're not making it, they're arbitraging value. <laughs> Okay, first of all. They're arbitraging value. I like, that's Bo, a great is, is, is that a brother from another mother for you? He, he was rocking the biceps. He you had know, some biceps. Was, this reminds me of, we've reacted videos where somebody said, just buy low, sell high. It's that's that all you have to do to be rich. It's and, easy. and it's almost, if we could walk around and we walk by a building that's for sale, if it had the intrinsic value, and then where the sucker is, it's gonna uh -huh. pay you. Yep. That That's just madness. That's not the way wealth creation Clearly, that's actually not occurs. how wealth works. That's not where wealth comes from. The, the reality? You buy, you, look, he is, on, he is right in the fact that you make money from assets appreciating, but somebody has to willingly sell you that asset. And it's just like some of the commercial mm -hmm. real estate. We bought in a pandemic mm -hmm. when everybody thought the sky was falling. Fast forward, pandemic is subsiding. Now everybody wants that building. There's usually a lot more going on than you just making a billion dollars, a million dollars by just buying stuff and then finding a sucker to pay more. There's, there's a lot more and to And you got to start somewhere. He said the way you get to a million, you just go buy something. Or the way you get to 10 million, you buy something worth 8 million. It's really hard to start out at $8 million. Yeah. The way that you save your first $100 is you have to save your first $100. And same thing with $10,000, $100,000, million, and so on. You want $100,000 coming into your bank account every single month? This is what you're going to do. Real estate, you can make money out of thin air. It's legit. You can actually make money out of thin air. I've seen it. All I've you seen need it. to do is be able to save up enough money to buy a real estate property, okay? Now, inflation is going to come in. The property is going to appreciate yep. value. Now, all you have to do is pull money out of that equity or real estate property value that you just made off of thin air. You're going to pull that out and go buy another one and do the exact same thing. And you're going to keep doing that. Every single one starts cash flowing three to $5,000 a month. You guaranteed. You, go. you got 100000 coming in your bank account. He said, all you have to do is go buy real estate mm -hmm. and then... It, Wait I for mean, it to go up in value it, and then it, take some inflation and take, out. They skipped so many steps. Being somebody who we've actually done real mm -hmm. estate, done residential, done commercial, banks don't like to give you money. No, nope. I'm just going to go ahead and tell you, they do not want to give you money unless you can show or at least look like you don't need the money. So the fact that, that he can say, oh, getting 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 into real estate is so easy, just keep buying it. No, no, you, it's, there's a lot of steps they're skipping. And he said that it's very easy. Okay, well, it just goes up in value and someone else is paying you three to $5,000 a month. Just because you own a piece of real estate does not mean that that piece of real estate will generate positive cash flow for you. Because if you're borrowing money and then you're pulling equity out, you have to service the debt. Then you have to make sure you have tenants and you have to make sure you take care of maintenance and caring for the property. It is not nearly as easy as what he just said. It certainly does not show up out of thin air. So are these videos popular? Because we've uh, seen now two videos where people basically say, hey, to make money, all you gotta do is do this, do this. Is that it's, easy? Is that easy? And and I'm like, there's no way this stuff, surely you guys aren't listening to this and thinking well, that's good. let's see if there's any more. Best summer side hustles for teens, part 12. Step one, have friends. Next, go to Foosbook Marketplace. Set the prices to zero. And type in furniture. This shows you a list of people who need to get rid of things, but don't want to pay movers to take it away. Then you just pick it up, clean it up a bit, then resell them elsewhere. That's about 200 per couch or 1400 per week. Now this is legit. This is, this is, this is not illegitimate. This is not a fallacy, but I don't know that this is how, this might be a way to do side hustle. This might be a way to generate income because there is an arbitrage. Some people don't want to get rid of their stuff. So you can go take the stuff they want to get rid of for free and you can clean it up and sell it. That's viable, but this is not quick and this is not flipping and this is not Super, super easy. This actually takes a little bit of work. Well, work, plus you have to have, you got to convince somebody's parents <laughs> or you have to have a big enough garage that they don't buy, they don't want to park their car in and their spouse doesn't want to park their car in there. They're going to let you do your couch operation right. where you're going to yep. be in there. This reminds me, when I was a kid, one of my dad's parents, a very successful gentleman, said, boys, y'all need to quit doing what you're doing. You need to go buy beat up John boats, <laughs> restore them, and then resell them. And I remember thinking, 
Well, we can only do that once or twice, you know. Yeah, it's not like it's there's not like John boats laying around. It's kind of the same. Now, look, I think there is a lot of furniture, but the problem is, how much money are you going to be able to sell? Because I got to tell you, most couches, they're kind of gross. Yeah, if somebody's right. willing to give you something, mattresses, couches, or other things that they're talking about selling, there's a reason for, they're for getting free. Rid of it. It's because there's an ick factor that I, I don't know that um, I might be the one to giving you the free stuff, but <laughs> I don't know that I'm the buyer of the free stuff. There's, there's a lot of work in that to, to turn that into true wealth and income. Here's what you're going to do if you want to be rich and you're starting from square one, courtesy of your favorite Wall Street hot girl. You're gonna strip. Oh. S, savings. Three to six months of living expenses. Set this aside in an FDIC insured high yield savings account. This is the one I use. No pressure to use that I one. I love it. T, total debt. Rank it from highest to lowest interest rate and pay off any debt with a 7% interest rate or higher before I'm, I'm moving to, on this acronym to throwing me way off. Our retirement. Make sure you're taking advantage of tax efficient accounts like an IRA or a Roth IRA. Oh, Set up these accounts and try to max out your contributions and then you can invest in things like index funds or target date retirement funds. And if you really don't know what you're doing, you can just have a robo advisor do it for you. I invest in the traditional sense of stocks and bonds, but also in your career and in a side hustle. How can you maximize your She's cash your flow? BFF. Maybe real estate? And P, plan for the future. What are your five and ten year goals? I found that it's really helpful to put pen to paper so I can try and manifest these. Bo. Oh, okay. Okay. First, hot Wall Street? Your favorite Wall Street hot girl. Uh, your what, favorite what was, hot, no, no, what, hot girl, hot Wall Street girl. Okay. Wall, Wall Street, Street hot girl. girl. By the way, it's very effective because I'm going now forever, <laughs> forever. It's burned into my eyes. Strip. Strip. And That's then go through that thing. So it, it's genius in that way. And he, But here's, what, here's what's great about what she did. It was memorable, but it was actually pretty accurate. She yeah. kind of walked through what are the things you need to do. I love the first two she started with, the S and the T, was save into an emergency fund so you can make sure that you keep yourself protected, you keep yourself out of the ditch. And then T, make sure you're knocking out any sort of debt. You know, we have a similar system, the financial order of operations. We call it the FOO. Maybe not quite as... Uh, well, no, you can actually catch- share it with your neighbors and your friends without, without blushing. blushing. That's right. So, so definitely, financial order of operations, moneyguy.com slash resources, hook yourself up. So her her list was fantastic. We would say we do it a little bit different, but if you can implement the thing she says, that is a really great way to start. Now, here's the only one that I would, I would flip around okay. a little bit. She ended with, write down your plan. Start thinking about what you yeah. want to do. Yeah. We would probably say start with that one. Begin with the end in mind. Understand what you're financial goals are so that as you work through the financial order of operations, you understand what it is that you're actually moving towards. I thought it was great. Strip. Strip. Do not invest in your 401k. <sighs> Why not? That's what everyone at my company does. Think about it this way. Let's say you save up a million dollars at retirement. That $1 million will be taxed around 25%, so you're left with $750,000. <laughs> I mean, that's not terrible. Well, you forgot to account for a historical 3% inflation rate over the next 30 years. So your purchasing power will only be about $300,000 in 30 years. I didn't realize that. What should I do instead? Real estate is a good place to start. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so I'm getting so upset with these 401k haters doing this just egregious math crimes, like these horrible, horrible things. Oh, don't put in your 401k, because then you'll be taxed at 25%. Uh, Yeah, that's true. If you pull all of the money out on the day that you retire and you happen to be in the 25% tax bracket, in reality, when you pull money out in retirement, you don't pull it all out in one time. And if you saved well across a three bucket strategy, you can control your tax rates. That was the first thing you said. That just have, well, what, have what if some you did the with. Roth 401k? Yeah, a lot of employers, a majority of employers, actually offer the Roth, which is a tax free opportunity. I, I, I'll tell you what I don't like because I love real estate. Mm-hmm. But real estate, I just got to go ahead and tell you, if you're going to do real estate uh, in, in the right way, you better have deep pockets. That's this right. is not something, this is not the first, you know, right after you get your cash reserves, let's go buy our first rental property. I'm just telling you, it's a recipe, especially if you're running naked and bare on how much you have in financial resources, you will woefully feel the wrath of what leverage debt and real estate can do for you. Start off with building a financial foundation. That's what the financial order of operations does with the Roth investments, your employer plan, all those type of things, good cash reserves. So you'll have the deep pockets. So by the time you get to step eight of our system, the financial order of operations, you'll actually be able to do real estate the appropriate way where the banks want to give you money, where you'll be able to make it even when markets and the economy is tanking and your family will not be broke wondering how you could be so silly and stupid and think that you're going to make all your money by just Throwing it all in real estate without any money un- behind you to back you up. What was your biggest loss? 
biggest loss? Probably pretty recently. I was playing, um... Are we supposed to know who these are? 18 grand. It was 18 grand? Yeah, it was 18. That's nothing. No, I was pretty good at managing. That's not grand. bad. That's your biggest slot? 18 grand? Yeah. Bro, I lost 60 grand in two what? days. Yeah. It was like okay. 55. Yeah, that's a lot. That's like a... That's a car. That's a whole car. That's like, like boom, three cars. There's no way this is entertaining. If you look at your, like we go, if you go on Fidelity <laughs> and you look at your mobile app, you're like, what's my account today? What's cow, my yeah. account lost $55,000 today. And that happens. If you build wealth, you're going to see fluctuation. But the reality is you're long term on your investment. You know, when we talk about your money is going to work harder for you than what you can do with your back, your brains, and your hands, that means your pot's going to start getting, that army of dollar bills is going to get big. So all of them yelling, I lost 15000 on this day. I lost twenty three. I lost eighteen. Well, think about if you reverse that to the positive, that's why you invest. See, I took it a different way. I would say, what kind of strategy were they employing? Because he said he lost sixty grand in two days. Well, if you had a million dollar portfolio and you had a six percent two day swing, that's mm -hmm. not that crazy. But if his portfolio was only a hundred thousand dollars and he had the ability to lose sixty thousand dollars in two days, I'd say you're not actually investing. You're out there gambling. That that's, that's a not good point. building wealth for the long term. Now maybe he has a large portfolio and maybe those daily fluctuations make sense. But if that sixty grand was a large portion of what he has invested, I would say whatever you're doing, whatever the thing that you're getting into right now. I might not uh, I might not be using my eating money in that sort of stuff. That might be the stuff I do with my vacation money. Oh, no. <laughs> That's what most people think happens when the real estate market corrects. It's not. I'll show you what happens when the real estate market corrects. Remember 2008, Catchy. the worst crash ever? Well, that's actually what it looks like when you get a little perspective. Yeah, when you step back it. and look, real estate corrects all the time, but it always goes back up. It's not about timing the market. It's about time in the market. So buy real estate in any market. And if you hold on to it long enough, it will always go up in value. In fact, it actually doubles in value every 15 years. Okay. You know, I can tell this guy's probably not in the financial world. Right. He used a lot of words like always, guaranteed, gonna happen. Uh, he is correct that, yeah, most of the time, if you make a real estate purchase on a long enough timeline, it's going to become okay. That does not mean that you should just willy-nilly go out there and do it because it doesn't matter the price you pay. We all know when it comes to real estate specifically, the majority of the money that you make is going to be on when you purchase the property, not when you sell it. It's more about that purchase price. So you can't just completely ignore that altogether. He is exactly right in the fact that over the long term, I think it will recover the problem is real estate has the, the potential that it instead of recovering in a V-shape mm -hmm. like the equity markets have historically done, real estate can recover in what's called a U-type right. recovery, where it kind of drags at the bottom. And the biggest risk is you run out of gas, a.k.a. cash or money, to pay the bills to keep the leverage debt going before that recovery mm -hmm. happens. Can you outweigh the downturn so you actually get back to wealth building because guess what people who have money do it turns into mad max and road rule you know and somebody pulls up to somebody who's out of gas takes their junk for a cheap price and moves forward that's what you're trying to protect yourself from everybody always skips that step they always make it seem like it's just a a sunny day drive on you know on an afternoon and the weather's gonna be great that's not the way real estate is it is more like the mad max where you have to make sure you can make it through all all types of obstacles, people coming at you, and then you come out the other side. How could someone become financially free in 2022? Every year you wait to save a dollar, it's worth less to you when you need it when you're older. There you I go. Wish, when I was young, somebody explained the concept of compounding to me. Oh, so Situations good. I can remember where I had decent sized pieces of cash, which I just spent, and I don't remember anything I spent that money on. But if I just locked it away in something indexed to the S&P 500 and oh, forgotten so it, this guy watches um, our show. it would be worth a lot of money now. So I would recommend any young person, compounding is your friend. Oh, man, that... Boom! I mean, dr mic drop. I mean, seriously, <laughs> when we do our wealth survey every year of all of our millionaire clients, I have yet to have somebody say, YOLO, wish I would have spent more money. No, even our millionaire clients go, I wish somebody would have told me when I was 20, when I was 25, just save a little bit more because every dollar you have can turn into so much. It has so much potential. That's exactly 
what he was talking about. We actually have a deliverable you can go out and grab at moneyguy.com slash resources that will show you how powerful your dollars can be. For a 20-year-old, every $1 that you can put away for the future has the potential to turn into $88 by the time that you get to retirement. That $1 that you were going to spend, you probably won't even remember what you spent it on six months, a year, two years, five years down the road. But your future self, just like this guy right here, will thank you for taking advantage of the most valuable resource you have at your disposal, which is your time to let compounding interest take hold. Guys, this is what got me into this. I had a, an economics teacher in high school say, if y'all just save $100 a month, you'll be a millionaire. Blew my mind, changed my life. So here's the thing. There's a lot of noise. As we, that's why we do these react shows. If you like the content we share, we're actually cut through the noise, tell you how to actually maximize every dollar that you have the chance to build wealth with. Go to moneyguy.com. Also, go check out those resources Bo talked about. Moneyguy.com slash resources. I'm Brian Preston, Mr. Bo Hansen. Money Guy team, out. Out. 